Hello and good morning to our listeners from around the world. I want to welcome you to another edition of This Morning with Solivity, broadcasting live from our studio right here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and on KMET 1490 AM radio in Southern California. My name is Brian Wesley Johnson. I am so glad you're here. I am joined today by my very special friend and co-host, Candace Harper. Hey, Candy. Good morning, my love. Oh, good morning, my love. <laughs> how the, how has your week been? I mean, we were on we were on a little bit of a break last week. I was down in Hilton Head, as I said yesterday on yesterday's show, yeah, vacationing. Yeah. It was wonderful. How about you? What have you been up to? Well, I didn't vacation last week. However, I completely renovated my office now. I know I mentioned it a couple yes. of times. Yes. Right? I was in the midst of it all. And I shot uh, marketing videos. Woohoo! Right? So it was, a, it was a wild, wonderful week of things that I love to do. And I have a beautifully decorated office now. So I'm excited. All right. With those videos, did you get all like, you know, I'm <laughs> too sexy for my <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, I had to turn down the sex appeal a little bit. <laughs> Woo, that mo I all right. You want to do credibility over sexuality. <laughs> I can't help it. It oozes. <laughs> Man. But I, well, did, I did glam up a little bit. You it know. Of, well, of course. Of course. Well, well, I can't wait to see it. I can't yeah. wait to see that. I know, I know they're going to be, you know, we're, we're you know, we're going to be doing some things together and I can't wait to get started with you. Yeah, no, um, We've got a fantastic show because we have a fantastic guest that's coming up. I know. In just I'm a second. Sorry. Sorry. I know this is going to be a great show. <laughs> um, listen, before we get started, just want to remind everybody, listen, this is an interactive conversation. So we want your questions, your comments, your thoughts. This is a great topic today. I've been, you know, I'm so glad we're going to be talking about it. I'm going to be talking what the topic is in just a second. But listen, we're on Facebook and YouTube for our live feeds. Just post there. We'll do a shout out uh, to you if you're in different parts of the world. Or if you have a question or thought, we'll actually bring that up too. So remember, just post that to our live chats and, you know, get into the conversation. So listen. I am ready to introduce our very, very special guest today. Um, Shawnee Benton, Benton Gibson is the co-founder and CEO of Spirit of a Woman Leadership Development Institute, an organization established in 2002 and designed to educate, elevate, and affect positive and sustainable transformation in the lives of individuals, groups, families, and communities. Shawnee is a master teacher, trainer, healer, vision coach, performance artist, inspirational speaker, officiant, mother, and friend. Now, her principal teaching and healing tools consist of spiritual counseling, coaching, writing, sacred rituals, energy work, the performing arts, and storytelling as mediums to ignite transformation and initiate catharsis. Wow. With that, it is my pleasure to welcome to This Morning with Solivity, Shawnee Benton Gibson. Good morning, Shawnee. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> talking about you, darling. Talking about you. You know, I, I love, I love, I love, I love all the different things that you do. I just want to just say that when I read things like this with bios where you are just exploring all of who you are, I just can't help but have this big old smile on my face. Uh, <laughs> so welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are going to be talking today about the power of healing circles. And this is something, this is something that is part of your practice uh, at Spirit of a Woman Leadership Development Institute. And, you know, 
before we kind of start diving deep into that, I just, you know, I wanted to ask you this first question about your own journey, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what was your journey to like doing this work today, like with your passion and purpose? Because that's what Solivity is all about. So I wanted to give people a little bit of background information about you. Sure. You know, as I was meditating on this topic in my journey, I had to go way back mm. before it was even conscious for me mm. um, that I was um, tapping in um, to healing circle to spirit on this level. When I was a child, I, you know, my play um, would include just like, I, I don't know what to call it. Like I would go away from myself, mm -hmm. um, from my physical body. Um, and, you know, I didn't know what to call it, but I, it would happen often mm. and be taken space to spaces where I could be covered and grounded because I didn't always receive that covering when I was, you know, inside of my family of origin. Yeah. And I just realized now that my first healing circle was ancestral. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah. And they knew what I had to do for the future. So they wanted to make sure that I was covered because I wasn't getting it in the spaces that most children would get it. My family did the best that they could, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of distancing and being a highly sensitive being since I was a kid, yeah. I needed a certain level of covering and support and upliftment. And um, they, they gave it to me um, in that way. And um, the other space where I got it is in the black church, mm, mm -hmm, um, sitting mm -hmm. in the pews, listening to the choir, experiencing the ebb and flow of the voices of congregational um, energy and breathing and singing um, and the call and response. Um, I was cocooned in that space. And then as a young girl, I can't even remember how old um, I joined the choir mm -hmm. and um, also received it there, sitting in the alto section, surrounded by other voices <laughs> and being guided by the directorship that only a, a choir director can provide in right. the Black church yeah. um, and was yeah. cocooned and covered in that way, too. So there are many ways in which I the foundation for who I am as a spiritual leader was set um, wow. before I even had consciousness of it. Mm, 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 yeah. mm, mm, mm. Thank wow. you for that. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean <laughs> yeah I'm, i know i'm, I'm like you, this woman so i met shawnee almost a decade ago wow. and when she's describing you know this these origins of um uh self-understanding and, and things like that like i've actually gotten to personally experience it and so there's a uh circle that shawnee does within spirit of a woman called be the tree Mm -hmm. and that's how I first met her is by participating in that. And when I tell you, I think I was what, in my early 40s, it, it, it was so life changing because Shawnee is so spiritually connected. And I had never met anybody who really was so grounded wow. in what we were talking about the way that wow. Shawnee is. <laughs> right. <laughs> just right. Heard. right. And so when she talks about, uh, ancestors and spirit and things like that. Like that's a connection that every time I'm in your presence, Shawnee, that I feel. And it's something that, you know, you led me to in such a, a profound way. And one thing I've always been in awe of is your ability to um, express yourself and have people connect with that. And I wonder if you will talk about community building and how um, the spiritual support that you have developed for yourself and experienced yourself has supported you with, with bringing your community together. Because I know you have big communities. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, sometimes, Candace, and I know that you've heard me say this before, I have to be tricked into doing the things that I do. <laughs> so, um, I don't always go willingly. Um, but one of the things that I am so grateful for is that in early age, once again, um, being able to tap into spirit and recognize that there's something other than these this physical existence. Um, and then recognizing that they're my co-creators, that they're my partners in the work. Mm -hmm. And so when you speak about community, you know, I view the ancestors as my extended community as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's a term called Ubuntu, 
U P U N T U. And it means I am because we are. And I always capitalize the we because mm-hmm. it's so much bigger than the, the breathing and blood flowing bodies um, that we experience. Mm-hmm. So um, a more specific answer to your question is that I've always been in community in various ways. I've always been tapped into, even as a child, as the leader. Mm -hmm. And so I've been cultivating how to be with people in that way since I was really young. Didn't always do it well because sometimes my trauma would get in the way. I would be mean, Mm -hmm. I would be resistant, I would be using my word play to damage people. I could lacerate people with my tongue. Mm -hmm. But as I started to do healing work for myself and really recognize where that anger and ragefulness was coming from, then I softened and I realized that if I was going to thrive in this life, tapping in to the power of circles and healing um, from people and communities, specifically women, mm-hmm. um, like that, I was only going to be able to be my absolute best in the space of collective. Mm-hmm. And so um, one of the things that happened is raising young daughters, teenagers, um, I had a dear friend who also did rites of passage programming. And she was like, do you want to do programming for young girls and their families Um, and offer them something bigger than what school is offering them or the Girl Scouts, and no offense to the Girl (laughs) Scouts, right? Right, right, right. (laughs) Programming for the girls. And um, I I didn't realize that that was going to be life transforming and that the little girl inside of me, through the the covering of that collective, me being the covering and also receiving the covering would transform my whole life and my relationship with community. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'll say really quickly, and I'll, you know, pass back to you both, Mm -hmm. um, is once again, growing up in the church before I was even verbal, um, that set the stage for me to be in the rhythm and the energy of community and collective, the amens and the ahas, and <laughs> singing the amazing grace and the ebbs and the flows and the sweating together and the shouting and all of that right. just fed my soul and just mm-hmm. created the space for me to deeply love how black folks show up in community. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> you know, it, it's so funny. I'm like, we, shoot, we could just end the show on that. <laughs> <laughs> we just now we just 13 minutes in. Yeah, you know, I'm loving I I'm loving this conversation. Um, you know, we're we're gonna take a quick break. Um, but when we come back, I want to ask you, Shawnee, because I, I know that there might be people that are not familiar with what a healing circle is. And so I'm gonna ask you when we come back uh, to talk a little bit more about like the 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 history of healing circles. And, you know, again, we talk about this aspect of our ancestors, which is very, very important within the African diaspora, right, of, of, of that our ancestors are with us always, and that we stand on the shoulders of them. And that's how we move forward in our own lives. So um, I just want to talk about that a little bit. So everyone, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll have more with Shawnee Benton Gibson and talking about healing circles in about mm, two minutes. We'll be right back. (laughs) Hi there, Sheila Applegate here with some exciting news. I've joined the incredible Soul Liberty team as the host of the new Consciously Awesome live show, where I will be sharing insights to help you discover your full brilliance and claim the vibrant life you deserve. So tune in every Wednesday right here on Solivity TV to join the fun. And remember to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss a single episode. Have an awesome week and I will see you on Wednesday. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity and fame, living your passion, 
feeling your life has purpose. Solidity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play, and doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. And we're back with more of this morning with Solivity. I'm joined by my beautiful co-host Candace Harper and mm-hmm. our very special guest Shawnee Benton Gibson, the co-founder and CEO of Spirit of a Woman Leadership Development Institute. We are talking about the power of healing circles. And you know, as I said at the last, at the end of the last break, I wanted to talk a little bit about this idea and this truth of our ancestors are always with us and that this is part of the history of why we do healing circles. Shawnee, can you go into a little bit more in depth around like, you know, the history of healing circles and why they came about? Mm. Um, You know, the first thing that comes up for me um, is uh, the the African centered paradigms, the Mm. Um, the practices that we've lost, especially those who are here Mm -hmm. in the United States, what was robbed of us, um, Mm -hmm. you know, because of the antebellum period or the enslavement of our people. So it incenses me that I don't have deep connection to my roots. Like I can't Mm -hmm. trace back beyond my great, great, great grandmother and many other cultures can, Um, you know, but I think about ring shouts um, and I think about how, uh, my African um, ancestors who were enslaved were so dope, so innovative yeah. that they were able to blend in African scented practice movement, mm-hmm. um, drumming without the drums right. by way of ring shouts. And I don't know if yes. you and Candace are aware of what they are, mm-hmm. but it's a blend once again of the rhythmic energy that comes from African drumming and movement Mm -hmm. and dance, but they were denied that, you know, even Mm -hmm. killed for doing that. So they found Mm -hmm. a way to blend um, the indoctrination of the uh, Christian practice and belief systems around Jesus and worship. And they blended in the African centered practices and hid what they were doing inside of the Christian pantheon and structure right so they would move in a circle and they would use their body as the drum Mm -hmm. you know and just tapping and clapping the sides of their thighs and Mm -hmm. hands and chanting and call and response Mm -hmm. it's not the first um space where um healing circles emerged but when i think about circling up as a powerful conjuring Mm -hmm. um and manifestation of spirit That's the first thing that comes through for me. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, indigenous and African centered people operate from collective and they operate from circling up. You know, there's equity for all and Mm -hmm. all are welcome. You know, the passing of the peace pipe and the sitting with elders and like that circle energy is everywhere. It's in the cosmos, it's in the the solar system. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's in us, it's divine, Mm -hmm. the cells are circular. Um, the egg is circular, <laughs> uh, fertilized by the sperm. So, right. you know, it's everywhere, that technology, but we don't always tap in and we're taught that we're individuals and independent, but it's really not true. Like all of this is cyclical and circular and anything beyond that or anything outside of that is a fallacy. It's made up and it's mm-hmm. actually doing us a disservice not to tap in on that level. Wow. Yeah, wow. Mm. Thank you for that, Candice. Well, I love too, Shani, that you pointed to the individualism, right? So um, I was talking earlier about how we first met and and um, joining Be the Tree and being part of a circle. So I also grew up in the Black church. And I think the Black church that I grew up in, while it was a, a loving place, it, it was a milder Black church. <laughs> others, others describe. And it also was a very colonized Black church in that there was a, a behavior requirement where there wasn't any speaking of tongues or, um, you know, there was gospel music, but it, it was not as lively as other churches I visited, you know, right. in my adulthood. Right. But, um, you know, when we did our first work together, the, the biggest sense that I got and that I started to understand about myself was my individualism. 
and how much I um, was practicing lone wolf and not understanding the power of being in a circle and being connected to other human beings and you know my connection in the cosmos. And so what would you say to people? Because I know there's people out there listening. I even have people that I know in my life who they do the spirituality thing where they read all the books and you know watch all the YouTube videos and and like I was doing, but still have that fear around uh, involving in a community. Cause you know, when we did yeah. Be The Tree, yeah. we tell our secrets. Shawnee has a thing she says, expose yourself to expand yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you have to give something up that doesn't work in order to be able to, to uh, join a circle and really be in it, really be intimate with it. And so what would you say, Shawnee, to people who are out there in that story of I'm on my own, I gotta do it by myself. You know, this ain't gonna work for me. I'm not telling nobody my business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was so much <laughs> in what you shared, so much that I can point to yeah. and unpack. Um, what Spirit just dropped in is that saying, let the circle be unbroken, you mm -hmm. know? And yeah. I just think about all of the, the things and the systems and the, the, the concepts and principles in this world that we live in that try to break the circle and break the people in it, especially mm -hmm. those who identify as Black, Indigenous, people of color. And so when you were saying how you came into the space operating from that individualism and then also came from a, a spiritual community or, or practice where there were rules to worship. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. Rule, yeah, I'm, I'm big right? on structure. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a very ritual oriented person but I don't view them as rules, right. you know? So when I think about, and I'm just going to be me, uh, Brian's getting to know me, Candace, you know me, just speaking mm -hmm. about patriarchy and white supremacy culture, you know, what we're taught how to behave and how to toe the line and just how that creates dis-ease in people mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. none of us as humans can survive on our own. Yeah. Like we're born into families. Now they may not always be well, the families that we're born into, but the bottom line is that if you leave a baby on its own, once it's birthed, it's not going to survive. It's not going mm -hmm. to thrive, that you need to be fed at the breast or held. Even babies that don't get coddled, you might get a bottle, you might get your, your pamper changed. But if you don't get that love and nurturance that you won't, you, you could die as a baby or fail to develop or thrive. Mm -hmm. right. So circles are important touch is important and it's not always about the physical touch it's about the energy that circles around and that's where the healing comes from too mm -hmm. um but it's also about the right energy too right <laughs> right circle, and it can be very very toxic and it can mm -hmm. kill off possibility so for those who are unclear about the power and necessity of circling up and connecting about this whole concept of don't tell you first of all you don't have no business <laughs> <laughs> You really don't. <laughs> Everything that we experience, there is there are universal stories that cross cultures. Mm. The conflict with the mom, right. um, the personal conflict with self. Am I good mm, enough? Right. Like it comes in various ways, but there are things that we deal with across the planet in different languages and in different cultural practices and uh, paradigms. And it's so important for us to recognize that we operate interdependently in everything. I can mm -hmm. breathe only because the air circulates around outside and inside of the space where I am right now. Right. When I eat, I have to think about the food that came from the ground. That's partnership. The earth mm -hmm. serves and right. we serve it. And we don't always do it well, but f forgetting the interdependence is what's causing all of the dis-ease and imbalance in the universe and in this planet with all the super storms and everything that's happening. That's just mother nature pushing back up against us because we've forgotten the power of circling up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, yeah. we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take a pause, but I want to dig a little deeper into that, that thought of interdependence, right? Because I think that even in today's society with things that are going on, I mean, we just, I mean, it, it, it happens everywhere in, in my, my opinion, in terms of like this, this perceived conflict with being interdependent with other people and other places and other things. Um, let's talk about that when we come back. So we're going to take a really short pause and we'll have more on the power of healing circles with Shawnee Benton Gibson. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank 
You can find all the Satana products at our Go Shop on Solivity at go.solivity.com now. Shop for beauty products, skin care, hair care, it is all there at the Go Shop. Go Shop Solivity. Told you that was going to be a quick break. We are back with uh, Shawnee Benton Gibson. We're talking about the power of healing circles. And one aspect that we just kind of ended the last segment on was this thought of interdependence. I had this drilled in me as a kid <laughs> from, from my parents around, first of all, how we express love to each other, mm -hmm. right? And, and how we commune with each other that yes, we are quote unquote individuals, but we, but we learn to grow with each other through interdependence. Right. Because no one ever does it alone. Mm -hmm. And this beautiful Shawnee, I, I, I was again, I was over here smiling. But my, my, my cheeks are getting red because I'm just <laughs> smiling so much with the words and, and the thoughts and from your heart that you're speaking, because this idea of of the circle. Right. That's so important to this concept. Can you can you d talk a little bit more about interdependence and, and the importance of that and how healing circles represent that? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, to me, it's just so crystal clear, but now, but it wasn't always because mm -hmm. I was indoctrinated in school mm -hmm. to be smart. I mm -hmm. tell people, you know, all the time that, um, well, lately, that one of the worst things that could have ever happened to me um, was when I was uh, labeled gifted. Mm -hmm. uh, and these labels, it's part yeah. of that independent, I'm separate type of energy. Yeah. And you know, you being measured against other people, how you sing versus how I sing, how you process information versus how I process information, what you get on the test versus what I get on the test. Mm -hmm. And even though we're sitting collectively in classrooms growing up, um, there's a separateness and this right. com competitive energy that we're taught to have from the time that we're small. Mm -hmm. And so that gifted label created a need for me, um, unnatural need for me to compete against Candace and you, Brian. And mm -hmm. to, if I didn't get the 100 and I got a 96, which is great, right? <laughs> right. About four points And then looking at your paper to see that you got 100 and what's wrong with me that I missed the four points. Mm -hmm. Now that is very exhausting and it's mm -hmm. antithetical to how we're really designed to live. Right. When I think about interdependence, I also think about the body, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the organs and how they work, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, how the brain operates and it fires off, like all of them feed off of one another. If I don't drink enough water, it impacts the system. Mm -hmm. If I don't breathe enough air, it impacts the system. Right. And so these basic concepts are missed because we become these little drones that get poured <laughs> into in ways that don't serve us and teach us how we're separate from one another. And then the right. missing two is the emotional and spiritual intelligence, which will help us to tap in and connect with other people and feel into what other folks are dealing with. But we're not taught to work that muscle. We're taught mm -hmm. to operate from our cognitive and brain power. And it's it's not enough. I have a great brain, but it's not enough to navigate in community. It's mm -hmm. not enough to be a leader of a healing circle to right. just about what this is. I have to feel into it and let spirit move so that what the collective need is, is met powerfully right. and with intention and integrity. So we're missing mm. all of that in um, these spaces and it's important for us to restore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. wow. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I know, right? You know, you know, Candy, before, before you go, I'm just, I just had this thought as Shawnee, as you were talking around these circles and the fact that the circle is part of a curve. It's part of a curve line. I mean, that kind of thing. There are no straight lines in the human body. There is no straight line in nature, right? That's all these curves. It's all around connection. And so as you're speaking, I'm just, I just want people to remember that the circle is part of what is natural and that a straight line 
is something that was man-made, mm. right? Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, what stood out for me, Shawnee, is when you mentioned about emotional intelligence, and I just like, even in this moment, just had a breakthrough, which that's another thing, y'all. Anytime I spend with Shawnee, I always walk away with some sort of breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, Shawnee. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about emotional intelligence and what you were saying about competitiveness. And, you know, because I also was, was even though I was not uh, identified as gifted, I was raised with a level of competitiveness, whether it was with my sisters or, um, you know, other people at school or whatever. My mom was one of those people that if, if you know, somebody bullied you, they were just jealous. You know, like th that idea. Right you're better than, or you need to be better than, or whatever you need to do has to be uh, at a certain level. And I'm tying that with, you know, what you mentioned about emotional intelligence and how much the more that I uh, uh, focus on or cultivate my emotional intelligence, the less over my journey so far that competition thing has been, has had any sort of importance. And just by what you just shared, I'm so present to, you know, it, like this idea. And I go, I always go back to COVID because I think about people buying up toilet paper and, you know, being very self, uh, self survival mentality, right? This idea that we have to be better than how much it stands in the way of how, how well all of us can be. Mm -hmm. Right, like how much yeah. it, it hinders us from being able to um, see about the collective rather than just the individual. While I do believe you have to fill yourself up to overflow, it's I, I think that's for me the apex of emotional intelligence. And I, I feel like, I guess what's there for me is how to uh, encourage uh, shift, transform for others that thinking of, I just got to do for me and my family, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you say to people to have them open up to that? If let's say, God forbid, we had another pandemic situation, like buy toilet paper for the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> what, right. what do you say to people so that they have a, a, a sense of that I do better when I do do for all of us rather than just for myself. Mm. Yeah, thank you for this question um, the, or in comments too. You know, one of the things that I am so profoundly um, connected to is that I recognized fully um, the essence of community and what it can provide when my daughter passed away in 2019. Mm. Um, that. I was operating independently in the sense that I was like, I'm paying for my daughter's funeral because she didn't have insurance. And I'm like, I'm her mother. I'm not asking community for the money. I was very much concerned about what it would look like for me not to be able to generate um, or to demonstrate that I could cover her in that way yeah. um, as far as her final right, which was her homegoing service um, as a being on this planet. And I got very caught up in an egoic space mm. and what I was um, paying a lot of attention to was how I was being witnessed by community as a mother who lost wow. a child and how I needed to straighten up yeah. and um, fly right. As my grandmother used to say, I think there's a song that says the same thing. <laughs> oh yeah. But, um, <laughs> my, my collective healing circles checked the hell out of me. Mm. They came to my son in love's house when my daughter was living with her children. And they were like, you will not take that on. She is our daughter, too. And mm. we will make sure that she's covered. Sit back, hold on to your resources and let us be a resource and a well for you to dip into and drink from during this sacred time, during this time of mourning and grief. Mm. Um, and I listened. Yeah. And um. I just was reminded also for a year and a half after my daughter died, every day I received text messages, phone calls, emails, packages in the mail. People were sending pampers to the baby because, you know, she died 13 days after giving birth. Mm -hmm. Like all of these things were happening on the power 
and, and from the frequency of community and collective. And those circles took care of me. And I also mm. think about folks who don't have access like that because they don't choose it for one or because of circumstantial situations. Like some of us don't choose community and it's a very conscious choice. Yeah. But I am so blessed and covered because I recognize that I am because we are. That mm. nothing that I have has come by way of me alone, that I'm actually, even through my own personal gifts, it comes from ancestral energy and fertilizer, mm. that there were singers in my family and I'm able to sing, that there are writers and speakers and folks who are denied access to utilizing their gifts, but they're like, we wanna make sure it comes through through you and you mm. better act right and you better mm. serve. And that's what I do. Wow. Wow. I'll quickly say too, that even in the space of emotional intelligence, there's five components to it. Mm -hmm. And um, it talks about self-awareness mm -hmm. and it talks about the ability to recognize your own moods and emotions, but through how they affect others, which is mm -hmm. circle, community, collective. Mm -hmm. I, I'm self-aware, but it's because I'm here to serve others and I gotta make sure that my emotions are checked so I don't do damage in circle and community. It talks mm -hmm. about self-regulation for the service of others. It talks about internal motivation for me, for the service of others, empathy for the service of others. And the last one is absolutely connected to other, which is social skills. Mm. So even though we're talking about our own emotional intelligence and the muscle of it, it's about service of others. Mm. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amen. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm over here snapping, Goodness. clapping. <laughs> you know, um, speaking of service to others, Shawnee, you are the founder, co-founder of a fantastic institute that I want you to tell us a little bit more about. It's the Spirit of Spirit of a Woman Leadership Development Institute. Can you tell us a little bit about how you know you know the the reason why you founded this organization and the things that you're doing there? Sure. So once again, having to be tricked into I was in spiritual community and a leader in that space and had a great friend, Monica Dennis, both of us born mm -hmm. on the same day. Um, me, mother of two at the time and her not a mom in the physical sense, like having given birth, but a mother beyond her years, like old soul. And mm -hmm. so we were experiencing um, uh, something that happened in the women's ministry at the church. One of the mothers, her 14 year old daughter um, ended up contracting an STD. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were talking about it because my daughters at the time were 12 and 13. So Monica and I were chopping it up one night and she tells the story differently. I'm going to tell it my way. Right. <laughs> um, I was like, I felt like we were talking and gossiping right about it. And then we were stopped in our tracks. I don't know, spirit moved. And it was like, wait a minute, are we about transforming and addressing this issue in community? Or are we just gonna gossip and build momentum around this low vibration? And so we right. decided that we were gonna do something about it. And Monica started talking about her relationship with the Girl Scouts and her relationship with rites of passage programming. And because I was a, a trained social worker, psychotherapist, I talked about my work in collective spaces and group work mm -hmm. and my work just with community as a, even cheerleading, like all the things yeah. that I've done, singing on choirs. Right. And so we decided that we would co-create an organization that would serve young girls and their families so that it's issues like what we were talking about and gossiping about wouldn't continue. And so my girls could have covering. And so we designed Spirit of a Woman. And the name I'll say, and then I'll quiet myself, came from <laughs> spirit from the ancestors because i opened a book and i said ancestors please or spirit please tell me what the name of this organization should be i flipped open a page and pointed down and the word sow mm. um came up in the book um, where my finger was pointed mm. and i was like okay this is not the name but it's an acronym so what yes. will i create and spirit of a woman came through. So mm -hmm. the Development Institute came through. And the rest is history. The organization, the business, the company is 20 years old. Monica's no longer with me. She released 10 years after we um, were doing the work together because she had her own path. Right. But I continued with the work and it's evolved into training, development, coaching, rites of passage for adults, like all the layers, speaking engagements, opportunities to lead, but with the covering of collective and healing mm. um, as my guide and tenant for um, the work. 
Yeah. Whew. I mm. I can testify to the word the the acronym. So it's it's sowing, it's cultivating. Yes. <clears throat> it's cultivation of spirit. Right. <laughs> yeah, and it's right. yeah, it, it couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> you know, um the 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 reaping comes from the sowing, right? Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. the fact that you're sowing collectively means you're reaping collectively and that um, you're being a foundation for each other as you move forward in life. Again, when we, you know, as, as you were talking about this, and I know I'm getting into my final thoughts already, I'm going to probably have something else after, after the break, but <laughs> Shani, I mean, um, you really personifying um, what it means to be bold and courageous and allow yourself to be tricked, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, <laughs> into doing the work that you were always meant to do. That was your birthright. And part of your birthright is, is to be a transformational agent on this planet. And that's very obvious to me. And um, I'm so glad that you came on. Would you come back? And join us again. Oh, absolutely. Now, and I'm recognizing through how you speak that we're kindred, Brian. So, <laughs> you know, I gotta come back. Like I don't like, know what you're talking about. Me. I don't <laughs> know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, I was tricked too. <laughs> <laughs> so you call, I will come. All right. Um, All right. I love it. I love it. I love it. Any final questions, Candace? I mean, the questions that I ask are really just basically so so uh, people listening can just become more and more aware. I want to add that uh, Shawnee also started an organization called Wake Up Everybody, which is um, mm. a regular morning uh, workshop facilitation and learning and growing and just nourishment and gifts of a community. And one thing that's really beautiful about it is that, uh, you know, Shawnee started Spirit of a Woman and with Wake Up Everybody, it includes uh, all genders. And mm. so my, I guess my question would be, Shawnee, talk to me a little bit about that, that journey of, of, you know, bringing in everybody and what it's been like to have more masculine energy in the space and, you know, what that, what that has looked like from a, the leadership perspective. Sure. So, um, yeah, even with Spirit of a Woman, um, I remember when um, I received a download. That's what I call it. When Spirit speaks and gives me things, <laughs> innovations yes. or yes. Um, shakes me up, like checks me or disciplines me. When the download came through that the girls in the Rites of Passage program needed covering, male covering. Mm -hmm. um, there's something that I used to teach about a lot um, and it's called flesh hunger. Like when you're not touched literally and figuratively, energetically, emotionally, spiritually, you can be um, like there's dehydration. You could be starved, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a human being. And so we need the touch of masculine energy um, and we need the touch of feminine energy and everything in between. We need the touch of nature, which has masculine and feminine in it as well. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be nourished. And so men, even though it's spirit of a woman must be a part of that nourishment. Mm -hmm. But I want to also put a caveat in men who are grounded and not mm -hmm. misogynistic or mm -hmm. patriarchal being mm -hmm. in the space. And I will absolutely check that energy when it comes mm -hmm. from women or men or young people in the space, because any of us can be patriarchal in the way that we show up because we've been trained to be so, right. mm -hmm. you know, so it's really important for brothers to be a part of anything that I do because it's the full circle. Like we're talking about circles without them. The healing circle is not complete. Even mm -hmm. when it's all women, the masculine energy must show itself in some ways so that there's balance. Right. And so I'm so, so crystal clear. So wake up. Everybody once again, came from ancestral download, the ancestors, my daughter being one saying you need to cover folks community mm -hmm. while COVID is happening. So it came through a week before they put us in lockdown. And once again, being fooled, I was told 30 days. And the other day it was like <laughs> 800 and 
<laughs> 18 days. I think today was 818 days that we've been doing Wake Up and Everybody. We just had our third year anniversary. But if yeah. they would have told me the truth and said that this was going to be in perpetuity, I would have been, hell no. I'm not. <laughs> hell no. Because <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't have time. Like, y'all leave yeah. me alone. Like, I don't have time. <laughs> so, um, the brothers, the sisters, the young people and Wake Up Everybody is mind, body, spirit work, is ascension work, is transformation work, is education. It's all of those things. And it saved a lot of lives during COVID because there were a lot of people who were isolated, insulated, and suicidal. And mm -hmm. they tapped into that sacred space. And now they're teaching, they're talking, they're healing. And it's amazing. And I'm just the conduit because I'm part mm -hmm. of the circle. So I'm just one voice that happened to speak up and have that happen. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I listen, oh, go well, ahead. listen, we're going to take a <laughs> quick break, but we'll come back and we'll talk more with Shawnee in about... Oh, about a minute, okay? We'll be right back. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity and fame, Living your passion, feeling your life has purpose. Solivity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play, and doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. And we're back with more of this morning with Solivity uh, Candy. It's so, I mean, we're already at the end of the show. I know. I know. I just wanted to get one thing in. Yeah, wanted, go ahead. Go ahead. Out of what Shawnee was saying, I want people to take away at least what I heard. And it's, you know, when, you, when you're called, right? She talks about yes. being called um, to do Wake Up Everybody and that we're at 818 um, facilitations, 818 uh, gatherings together. Yeah. And, and when Shawnee, when you mentioned about if you would have known it was going to be in perpetuity, you might've been a no. And I think so many of us, when we are called, it's like, we look at it and think, how in the world am I going to do all that? But it circles back around and no mistake. It circles back around to community. Right. And, and what has been beautiful that I've watched and observed just being in your space, Shawnee, is the way that you inspire people to, to, come in on the heavy lifting and it's it becomes not heavy lifting anymore right that willingness to go ahead and and heed that calling had other people come in and here we are at 818 mm, mm, mm. right so for people out there who are listening like i hope that that people walk away with in what shawnee said that if you are feeling a calling don't let that that catastrophizing of the future or how big it is or right. how big and anything I can imagine be the thing that stops you. Mm, because mm, I mm. think, you know, and thank you for this, Shawnee, for being an example of what it means to just step out on on faith and just move ahead and let the universe take care of the rest. Mm, mm, yeah, listen, this faith walk, <laughs> and I'm not talking about like or not like the way we've been taught. Um, well, I won't speak for the two of you, but the thing, the way I was taught about faith was very skewed. Mm. Um, you know, when I was young, for me, the faith walk is that the energy, the the universal fertilizer, like that that it's inside of me and outside of me as well, mm -hmm. and um. If I don't say yes, they'll tap someone else because of the mm. circle. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm grateful that I've said yes enough times to watch the power and the benefits of community. And when I tell you people showing up without getting paid money, but there's something about social and community and spiritual currency that is the gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. Money and the coins, the cheese, that will fade. But tapping in on this level and sharing that currency and serving on that level will bless you in ways that um, dollars and cents can never. Now, I'm not knocking dollars and cents because we need it in this lifetime, but I'm saying it's not enough to have a fulfilling life and to really, really make a difference here before you take leave and 
ascend, you know, as a spirit. Right. right. <clears throat> Shawnee, I'm, th thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <laughs> I am, I have, I have two thoughts. The first thought is a very simple one and it kind of dovetails on what Candace was saying. And that is, um, I think you're also telling people that taking a leap of faith is not a leap into just a leap into the quote unquote unknown. You're actually leaping into your own power. Yes, so, sir. you know, um, um, it's not, you know, this, oh my God, you know, uh, you know, all my, you know, I'm going to leap and I don't know what's going to happen. There's a part of you that does know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's the power that you have. The other thought that I have is, uh, the dear friend of mine, Howard Caesar, down in Houston, Texas, who's a reverend at the Unity Church down there, wrote a book called One Plus One Equals One, right? And so I look at this as you, this dynamic of you reminding people of the truth that when we come together and we work collectively on ourselves and and that we're we're being of service through our passion, which is we call purpose right? Mm -hmm. That only good things come from that because that is the truth about the who of what, of, of what, of who we are, right? It's not the things, it's not the professional title. It's not the, the, the test score that you said before the truth is that we're all spiritual beings. And that when we come into this collective, come into this circle, that the power of that comes from that grows exponentially. Mm. And that, and that, only good comes from that because you're 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 aligned with good you're aligned with love you're aligned with joy you're aligned with all those things and so thank you for for your own leap of faith your own leap of power and um we gonna have you back i'm gonna wrestle you, <laughs> bring you back on here so we can talk more about this um man listen we we're we're almost out of time i just want to let everybody know you can find out more about the Spirit of a Woman Leadership Development Institute and all the other things that Shawnee is doing by going to uh, the website at, at uh, sowleadershipdevelopment.org. You can also learn more about her. Um, Candice, you got some cool things happening with, uh, you know, it's homeostasis. Yeah. So that's my compilation book. It's, it's going, it's, Evolving into a funny, irreverent, loving, heart-wrenching, life-affirming journey into the lives of BIPOC women and women of culture, women of color, who have had a dynamic or tumultuous relationship with the idea of home. And so I'm calling in submissions because this, like I said, is going to be a compilation book about our stories. Because I feel like, you know, as we were talking about earlier, when you share yourself, right, the community, we're building community. And that's how we heal ourselves is through our stories and our commonality. And like Johnny said, nobody has business. There's always somebody out there who has what you have or is experiencing what you're experiencing. And so I'm hoping this is going to be a very healing project. And any proceeds from the project are going to go to organizations that create housing stability for uh, BIPOC people and LGBTQIA plus mm. uh, young people and um, also the contributors of the project. Aww. And so if you want to put in a submission, if you have a story to tell, it can be a low vibrational story or a high vibrational story, go to bit.ly forward slash it's homeostasis, the word it's homeostasis. But the title of the book will be It's Homey. Yo, stay. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's homeostasis. Yo, stay, sis. Listen, yeah. well, we're, we're, we're out of time. Thanks again, Shawnee, for being here. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, listen, everybody, please remember to follow us on social media, uh, you know, for access to probably exclusive content and giveaways that we're going to have in the near future. Um, you can go to our Solivity landing page at solivity.com forward slash this dash morning. And on behalf of all of us, I just want to say thanks again for joining us for another great episode of This Morning with Solivity. We hope that you come back and join us every weekday at 8 a.m. Eastern for our live broadcast or listen Thursday and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time on KMET 1490 a.m. for all of you out on the West Coast. Until next time, keep on having real conversations with passion and purpose. 
and create a high quality life today. So we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> Love you, Johnny. Love you. Prior written consent. All other rights reserved.